Hello, we're going to cover 13.3 in this section, which is finally we get to the partial derivatives. Kind of been um, mentioning it just a little bit in the 13.1 and the 13.2 um, videos. But here's where we actually get to do it and, and, and it, it's more intense, right? It's not as simple. <laughs> um, so the biggest problem is gonna be with this section is being able to keep straight which variable you're differentiating with respect to because the other variable gets treated like a constant, okay? And so you really have to, you know, hone in on that skill of being able to identify whether or not you need to use um, just a constant multiple rule versus having to use the product rule or when you would need to use the chain rule or you can just do the direct power rule, okay? Um, also knowing when you can just use a constant multiplier, like a fraction multiplier, versus having to use the quotient rule, okay? Um, and basically what you're just looking for is if in your product you have variables in both factors, then you need to use the actual product rule versus the constant multiple rule. Or if you're talking about a fraction, if the variable you're integrating with respect to is at the top and the bottom, you have to use quotient rule versus if it's just at the top or just at the bottom, you could use a constant multiplier um, and then try to take the derivative of whatever you have after you've taken that constant multiplier out, okay? So if we look at number one, number one says explain whether or not the quotient rule should be used to find the partial derivative. It says don't differentiate. They just want you to, they just want to know if you know <laughs> when to use it and when not to use it, okay? Um, and so for this case, it looks like they're differentiating with respect to y, which means if I do not see y in both the numerator and the denominator, my answer would be no, I don't need to use the quotient rule. However, if there is a y in both the numerator and the denominator, then I do need to apply um, the quotient rule. And since y is not in the denominator, my answer would be no, I don't need to apply the, qu the quotient rule, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to number two. And there's that notation that I kind of briefly talked about at the very end of the 13.2 video. Um, so here they're differentiating with respect to X, which means that constants are treated as constants. So the derivative of a constant is zero, but anything with just Y is also treated as a constant. So the derivative of this term would also be zero. And you can put plus or minus, it really doesn't matter. But the derivative of this with respect to X is just six. So ultimately, the partial derivative of the whole function is just six, okay? Similarly, if I'm doing F um, derivative with respect to Y, okay? And so notice I don't put the primes here like I did at the end of um, 13.2. The fact that you're, you have this little super subscript of an X does tell you that you have a derivative already. You don't need to write the little prime um, what was it like an apostrophe? You think that's the word? Um, you don't have to write that anymore. So um, we're gonna pretend now that y is the variable. So this guy is a constant. The derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of this term with respect to y is negative five. And the derivative of a regular constant is also still zero. So then the derivative of the entire function is ultimately just negative five. Okay, so now we're gonna do dz over dx, partial derivative. So we're taking the derivative of this function but with respect to x, okay? So we already know when we take the derivative of an exponential, we get e to the same exponent, but we also have to multiply by the derivative of that exponent, 
Okay. And then here's where that information comes into play. Like who is the variable that I'm supposed to be differentiating with respect to? And then who's the guy that's going to get treated like a constant? Okay. So I have this factor here, but it is good to know that Y is treated like a constant because I'm differentiating with respect to X. Why is that important? Because you could use the constant multiplier rule, which means you have just Y and then you have D, DX of just X. And we know what that is, it's just one. The derivative with respect to X of X is one. So we end up with Y E to the X Y. Now, similarly, I'm going to do the derivative of z with respect to y. So that's the derivative with respect to y of my function that was given. And then you get the exponential. But then you still have to take the derivative with respect to y of this xy. And remember, that means that x is like a constant. So I can treat it like a constant multiplier. So I can say e to the xy times x times the derivative with respect to y of y. And the derivative of y with respect to y is just one. So then we end up with just x e to the x y. And so I'm gonna type these in here. So the first one we ended up with y e to the x y. And then for the second one, we ended up with x e to the x y. Okay, now we're going to have this function. So again, we're doing back to this notation, just they use different notation each time. So just get used to it because you never know which kind of notation is going to be preferred for certain problems. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Well, no. This one has x's and y's in both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm definitely going to need to apply quotient rule for both partial derivatives. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first one. If I apply the quotient rule, it tells me this is just how I remember it. I don't remember that u, v, u prime, v prime, all of that stuff. I remember the mnemonic that my Cal 1 teacher taught me at Palo Alto. And he used the phrase low d high minus high d low over low squared. And how do I remember which one of these goes in the front? To me, you think of the, the back end, this part. The back end, I always remember, he would tell me to think of the guy Ned Flanders on The Simpsons. Um, I don't know how young you guys are, if you even know what Simpsons are, but <laughs> I know when I was younger, it was a big thing and everybody knew about The Simpsons, okay? Um, now you have like Rick and Morty and you have South Park and you have all these other shows that are more inappropriate. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Ned Flanders, the character in there always says, Heidi Ho, neighbor. And so this sounds a lot like Heidi Ho, neighbor. I just have to remember that it goes at the back. Okay. And that's literally how I remember it. It's so weird what sticks, but that is what stuck for me. So that's what I've always used ever since then, okay? So I'm gonna write down the low, the bottom. I mean, really, that's all this stuff is. People ask me, how do you remember? If I tried to explain to you about how I remember every single little thing, you would think I'm psycho because it's all these little mnemonics or little sayings or little things that, that help me to remember all of them always, okay? But I mean, even with just this story, it goes <laughs> a little in depth, right? So you can imagine all the other stories for every other formula I remember. Okay, now D high means I need to take the derivative of the top, okay? Now remember, I'm doing it with respect to X. So this guy is like a constant multiplier, which means he's gonna be there, but I still have to take the derivative of X, which is one, okay? Then I'm gonna put a minus sign and then high means I'm gonna keep the top exactly the way it was. And then I have to take the derivative of the bottom. Now I am taking the derivative with respect to X. So this term would be two X. And then this term is like a whole giant constant. So the derivative of him with respect to X would be zero. 
the whole thing over low squared. So this thing, the denominator, squared. And then it's just a matter of simplifying and, and seeing if you can cancel any factors or anything like that. So this is just y, I'm gonna multiply, x squared y plus y cubed. And here, this is really just like 2x times this. So I'm gonna get minus 2x squared y all over x squared plus y squared squared. So I end up with y cubed minus x squared y over x squared plus y squared squared. These two guys were like terms. One take away one is a negative one. Okay, and that's it. That is my derivative. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm taking my derivative now with respect to y. Okay, so I'm going to use my same little mnemonic. So low d high means take the derivative of that, but y is my variable. So x is like a constant. So this is like a constant multiplier. So I'm going to have that constant multiplier times the derivative of y, which is 1, minus high d low. So the derivative of this, remember x is now a constant, the derivative of a constant is zero, plus the derivative of this with respect to y is 2y. And then that whole result over the denominator squared. And so if I simplify this, this is just x getting distributed. I get x cubed plus xy squared. Here I'm just taking a 2y times that. So I get minus 2xy squared over x squared plus y squared squared. I end up with x cubed minus xy squared over x squared plus y squared squared. Okay, and then that's my um, partial derivative with respect to y. So here I had y cubed minus x squared y over x squared plus y squared raised to the square. Oops, I had everything all in the wrong spot. Okay, control x, control v. Here we go, control c, control v. Oh, I didn't do it. Okay, up top though I had x cubed um, minus x y squared. So hopefully I typed that in there correctly, but let's check. Oh, I did not type it in there. What did I do? This is a minus sign for fx and <laughs> I typed in a plus sign. So let me fix that real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on number five. I don't think I went through the thing on how many problems there are in this section. Um, there are 12, and one of them is a video, so there's 11. So we're about halfway, not exactly, but we're getting there, we're getting there. So g of x, y equals 5 ln, the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we definitely have to remember the rule for um, u, ln. So when I am taking the ln of u, the derivative of ln of u, you get u prime over u, okay? Or du over u, however you're used to your notation, okay? Calculus is so funny because there's so many different notations for the exact same thing, okay? Um, but whatever the end notation you use, it's the derivative of the argument over the argument itself. So this is obviously a constant multiplier. So I'm going to need the derivative of this over that exactly. Okay, so the derivative with respect to, what am I doing, dx? Okay, the derivative of this, and I'm gonna write it as an exponent. Okay, so the derivative of that over the original, that's what this says, the derivative of the argument over the original. Now let's see. So we're going to have to take the one half down, decrease it by one, so we get negative one half, 
and then apply the chain rule, the derivative of this. The derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. The derivative of y squared with respect to x is 0. It's like a constant. All over the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, this and this will make 5 halves in the front. And so then I will have 2x up top because this and this made this. This guy is up there. And then this guy's negative, so I'm going to put him downstairs. And because it's a one half exponent, it's actually another square root, right? So these will actually reduce, giving me 5x in the numerator. And then a one half exponent plus another one half exponent is just a one exponent, right? You have the same thing, you're going to get x squared plus y squared squared, and then the house is just going to pop off. So I just have this as my denominator. Now we're going to do the same thing for g of y, the derivative with respect to y. So same rule. I'm still taking the derivative of an ln. So here's my constant. And then the derivative of ln is going to be the derivative with respect to y now of that argument over the argument itself, which is, you can leave it as an exponent if you want. I'm just doing it a little bit differently, just so you know you can. Um, then let's see. So here, the derivative of this, we're going to bring down the power. We're going to rewrite the base, decrease the power by 1, and then multiply by the chain rule. So the derivative of x squared now is 0, because we're taking the derivative with respect to y. So this guy's like a constant, and the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of y squared is 2y. And so then um, we could do the same thing again. So this is going to become 5 halves. You're going to have 2y in the numerator, and then this is going to go downstairs with the other one. So the 2s are still going to reduce, and I'm going to have 5y in the numerator. And then when you add these exponents, you're going to get x squared plus y squared to the first power, which does not need to have a power then. You can just write x squared plus y squared without the parentheses or the power. So let's go in here and write all this down. So the first one we got 5x over x squared plus y squared. Now I'm going to copy that, control C, and I hope it will paste it. Yes, because all I need to do is change this variable to a y. And it should be the same thing. Okay, yay, two checks. Now we'll move on to number six. So here it says z equals cosine of 6xy. And they want me to do dc with dz with respect to x. So that means the derivative with respect to x of cosine 6xy. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. You keep your angle the same, but then you have to multiply the chain rule, the derivative of what's inside here. Now remember, x is the variable, so that means y is like a constant. So you have this constant 6y times the derivative of x, which is 1. And so then how do you simplify? That would be negative 6y sine of 6xy. Similarly, when we take the derivative of z with respect to y, We're going to derivative of cosine is negative sine. The angle does not change. But then we're going to apply our chain rule. So the derivative of that angle is going to be 6 and x are not the variables here. So they're going to be like a constant. And then y is the variable. So the derivative of y is just 1. And if I simplify that, I get negative 6x sine of 6xy. So let's go enter those in. So here we go, negative 6y, and then my trig functions, sine, 
of 6xy. Now I'm going to copy that because the other derivative is very similar. It just has an x in the front instead of a y. Okay, moving on. So they're just kind of like giving you the basics, right? What happens when we take the derivative of ln, regular um, functions, exponentials, trig functions. Um, so they're just kind of giving you every different kind of function that you would get. Of course, they can get more complicated, but they're not doing that to us just quite yet. So, and then sine x. And then it has this interval, pi at this point, okay? So it's asking us for fx at a certain point. Well, in order for me to find fx at a certain point, I just have to find the general derivative and then I can plug in the point, okay? This being the x coordinate and that being the y coordinate. So if I'm doing the derivative with respect to x, this does not have any x's in it. So it's like a constant multiplier. But the derivative of sine is cosine. And then if I do the chain rule, the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. So this is really e to the 16y cosine of x. Now when I do f of y, um, this guy is going to act like my constant multiplier. And the derivative of an exponential is the same exponential. But then chain rule, the derivative of its exponent is just going to be 16 times 1. So for this one, you end up with 16 e to the 16y sine of x. Now, if you're going to plug in your point, that means you're going to have e to the 16 times 0 cosine of pi. So that's e to the 0 times negative 1 e to the zero is one, one times negative one is just negative one. So I know this one is gonna be negative one. Now, for f y of pi zero, we're gonna plug in a zero for y and pi for x. So we get 16 e to the 16 times zero sine of pi. So that's 16 e to the zero sine of pi is zero. I'm just verifying. Oh, I'm in the wrong mode. Yep, just like I thought. So you get zero here, and then zero times anything is just zero. And so that's going to be this value. So number eight, I think I like better because it asks you for the general derivatives first and then it asks you for the actual point plugged in. Okay. That's essentially what I did, but it only wanted the two final answers. Okay, so let's do number eight. It says f of xy equals to 4xy over the square root of 2x squared plus 7 y squared. And we have the point 1, 1. Okay, so let's go find out what f of x looks like first. We do have x's and y's in both the numerator and the denominator, so we're definitely going to need to be using the quotient rule. Before I begin the quotient rule, um, I'm actually going to write this. I don't even like the quotient rule, so I'm going to use a product rule. I'm going to write this as 2x squared plus 7y squared to the 1 half. And because it's downstairs, it's going to be a negative 1 half. And then I'm just going to apply the product rule instead of the quotient rule, OK? If you want to do the quotient rule, by all means do it, but you should still get the same answers as me. If you don't, then you didn't do the quotient rule correctly, OK? So I'm going to do the first function times the derivative of the second. So we have a negative one half, um, our base, and subtract one, we get negative three halves, and then the chain rule. 
So we are doing the derivative with respect to x. So this becomes 4x. This has no x's in it. So the derivative of it is 0. And then we have plus um, the second function. times the derivative of the first function. Now we're doing the derivative with respect to x, so these guys are like constants. We're just going to have 4x times the derivative, I'm sorry, 4y times the derivative of x, which is just 1. Now both of these two terms do have something in common, but I am going to clean them up a little bit first. So you have this 4x times negative 1 half times this. Um, this will reduce that down to 2. So I'll have 2xy times a negative times 4x. So that's negative 8x squared y. And here I just have times 4y, so it's just 4y. Now they do have some stuff in common. They have a 4 in common, a y in common, and this radical but I have to take out the smaller exponent between the two um, factors here. So I'm gonna take out the negative three halves. And when I factor this out, I'm gonna get a negative two X squared. This is gone. And then the four Y is gone. And I'm gonna have a two X squared plus seven Y squared to the one power because negative three halves plus one is negative one half. Or you can think of it negative one half, take out this negative three halves that you're factoring, which is negative one half plus three halves, which gives you two halves, which gives you an exponent of one, okay? So, Um, these guys, since it's an exponent of one, I don't really need my parentheses, which means those guys are going to cancel and leave me with just seven y squared. So I really have 28 y cubed. That's a negative. So it's going to go downstairs, two x squared plus seven y squared. And that's the derivative with respect to x. Now we're similarly going to do the derivative with respect to y. So I'm going to use, again, the product rule. So the first function times the derivative of the second function. So bring down your power, decrease your power by 1, and then multiply by the chain rule. Derivative with respect to y means this guy's a constant, so you get 0. And derivative of this term is 14y. Then plus the second term, the second factor, times the derivative of the first factor. Remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to y, so x is like a constant. So the whole 4x is like a constant, and the derivative of y is just 1. And so if I clean this up like a little bit, this is going to be 2, 14y times a negative 2xy is going to be a negative 28xy squared, because y and y is y squared then 2x squared plus 7y squared to the negative 3 halves, plus this is just 4x, 2x squared plus 7y squared to the negative 1 half. Now they do have a 4, an x, and this 2x squared plus 7y squared in common, but I do need to take the lower exponent out, which is this one. So I end up with a negative 7y squared this is gone. I end up with just 1. And then this would be 2x squared plus 7y squared. Oh, I don't know why I'm putting a bar. There's no bar. Um, so then this 7y and this 7y are going to cancel. So you have 4x, 2x squared plus 7y squared times 2x squared which is 8x cubed, and the negative exponent means that the radical is downstairs. Now, I messed up. If it were a negative 1 half, then this is correct, which is exactly what I did here, right? I put it downstairs and I made a half. But it's also got this 3 exponent. So it actually should be 
um, either parentheses and a cube on the inside or a big parentheses and a cube on the outside. Either way is completely correct, okay? Both of them represent the same thing. Why? Because there's an exponent rule that tells you this can equal this or this, okay? Either of those versions is completely correct, okay? Now I still have to plug in one. So if I want fx of one, one, that means everywhere there's an, an x and everywhere there's a y, I'm going to put in a one. So we get 28 times one in the numerator. We get two plus seven in the denominator cubed. 28 over the square root of nine is three cubed. So we get 28 over 27. And then Fy of one, one is going to be eight times one cubed. And I already know what the denominator is gonna be. It's the same denominator, it's gonna be 27. So I get eight over 27. So let's try to type in all this craziness. Um, square root of, I already did the square root, so I'm gonna put this stuff in the parentheses. There we go. And then I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna change this to eight. What did I get? I got eight X cubed. And there we go. And then here I got 28 over 27. And here I got eight over 27. Okay, four checks, awesome. So, go ahead and on, oops, I turned my computer. Number nine. So, we have f of x, y, z, so this is a function with a bunch of variables, right? So in this time, all the variables aside from the one that you're integrating with respect to all become constants, okay? This one's really testing your skills if you can visualize who's the constant and who's not, okay? So fx, the derivative with respect to x, 2 and y are like constants, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. Here, x is the only one that's not a constant, so the minus 6yz is like a constant, derivative of x is one. And here the whole thing is a constant, so it's just equal to zero. So I get four xy minus six yz for my derivative with respect to f. Now here we go for fy. Now here, this whole thing is my constant and derivative of y is one. Here, these guys are my constant, so negative six xz and the derivative of y is one. And here again, 8z squared is my constant and the derivative of y is one. So we end up with 2x squared minus 6xz plus 8z squared. And then finally, fz, there's no z's in here. So it's like a big giant constant in which the derivative is zero. Here, it's like all of that is your constant multiplier and the derivative of z is one. Here, your constant multiplier is 8y but the derivative of z squared is 2z. So you end up with negative xy plus 16yz. Now let's go type in all of that information. So we ended up with 4xy minus 6yz. Here we ended up with 2x squared minus 6xz plus 8z squared. And at the bottom, we ended up with negative 6xy plus 16yz. Oops, yz. 
I think I typed those in there correctly. I guess that'll tell me, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we got them all right. Now, number 10. So we have f of xy equal to x squared minus xy plus y squared minus 5x plus y. And they want us to find all values for which fx and fy equal to zero. So first we have to figure out what fx and fy look like, and then we can go figure out whether where they equal zero, okay? So this would be 2x, this is my constant, times one, this is just a constant, derivative of this is negative five, that's a constant. So I end up with negative, or I end up with 2x minus y minus five. Now fy, This is a constant. This is the constant derivative of y is one. The derivative of y squared is two y. The derivative of negative five x is zero and the derivative of y is one. So we end up with um, negative x plus two y plus one. So then what happens if I set them equal to zero? I need to figure out when this equals zero and when this equals zero. And if you remember your rules for solving systems of equations, I could multiply both of these by two, or the whole equation by two, which gives me, I'm not messing around with this one, so I'm just writing it the same, negative 2x plus 4x plus 2 equals zero. So those go away, I get 3x minus 3 equal to zero, 3x equals positive 3, x equals positive 1. And then I can plug that one into any function to figure out why. So I'm gonna plug it into the top one. And then I'm going to add y to the other side. And so I get that negative three equals y. So what is the point? One for x, negative three for y. One comma negative three. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. One comma negative three. Now it looks like we need to do something similar um, for, uh-oh, I did not like my answer. Did I do something wrong? So x squared minus xy plus y squared minus 5x plus y. So when we did fx, we did 2x minus y, 0 minus 5, 0. So 2x minus y minus 5, yeah, and we set that equal to 0. Then for fy, we got zero, negative x, two y, zero, and one. So I got negative x plus two y plus one. Okay, so then when I multiplied by two, I got negative two, four, two, and zero. So that gave me three x minus three, three, one, and then when I plugged in one, I got two. Two take away five is negative three. Hmm. Why does it not like my answers? What did I do? Let's see what happens if I set them equal to each other. Because if they're both equal to zero, then they should both be equal to each other, right? Then that doesn't really help me because then I get 3x minus 3y minus 6 equal to zero. Or x minus y minus 2 equal to 0. Or negative y equal to negative x plus 2, or y equal to x minus 2. So if x is 1, that should be negative 1. Hmm. <laughs> what is going on here? 
Let me see if I would have plugged in my number one into here. I would have got negative one plus two y plus one. So I would have gotten two y equal to zero. So is it zero? That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. It should be the same answer. Give me one moment. I'm going to pause and then I'm going to go figure out why this problem is counting me wrong because I'm really not seeing the issue. And it may just be that I've been doing too much Cal 3 today. <laughs> so give me one moment. I'm going to figure this out. It'll look like I was gone for literally a split second. Okay, I finally see where I, <laughs> where I made a mistake. When I multiplied this times two, I got this. When I multiplied this times two, it should have been four y and then the two. So when I combined these, this was a three y, which meant this would have been a three y equal to three. And then when I divide by three, it would have received y equal to one. So when I went back to plug it into one of my equations, I should have been a plugging one in for y. That would explain why none of my solutions were working. When I was doing it different ways, I was like, it's not even a possible solution according to the algebra. So if I plug in this one for y, we can go figure out what x is. So I'm gonna take the top equation and I'm gonna plug in one for y. So I get 2x minus 6 equals 0. If I add the 6 over, I get 2x equal to 6, or x equals to positive 3. And so then let's go see if 3 and 1 is our solution. Yay, and see, that was it. <laughs> careful, right? Be very careful. That's what happens when you rush. Um, and I was rushing a little bit, but kind of already getting my boiling point when it comes to Cal 30. Um, so let me try this last one, just because we've got to do it, right? Um, we have x squared plus 4xy plus y squared minus 14x minus 10y plus 30. And so it's the same process. We need to find the fx, the fy, and then figure out what both of them equal zero, okay? So I'm going to do fx first. This is going to be 2x. This is going to be 4y times the derivative of x, which is 1. There's no x's, so it's 0. 14 times 1. No x's, so it's 0. No x's, so it's 0. So I end up with 2x plus 4y minus 14. Now for fy, no y, so that's 0. This is 4x times 1. y squared, oh, nope, derivative of y squared is 2y. Um, no y's, so that's 0. Here's a y, I get minus 10 times 1, and no y's, so that's 0. So we get 4x plus 2y minus 10. So then if I set up my equation, 2x plus 4y minus 14 needs to equal 0, and 4x plus 2y minus 10 needs to equal 0. Now you can choose whichever one you want to solve for. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the bottom one times a negative 2 so that this can be a negative 4 and the y's can cancel. So the top one stays exactly the same. And then the bottom becomes negative 8x, negative 4y, positive 20, equal to 0. So I end up with negative 6x, and then positive 6 equal to 0, which gives me negative 6x equal to negative 6, or x equal to positive 1. Then I'm going to plug that 1 back into one of the equations and solve for y. So 2 times 1 plus 4y minus 14 equals 0. 2 plus 14y minus 14 equals 0. 14y minus 12 equals 0. 14y equals 12. And so then I get y 
equal to 12 over 14 or 6 over 7. So let's see if that works. I don't know. I'm kind of second guessing that. I don't think I got a fraction when I did this at home. Well, let's see. It just might be weird. No, I saw a red X somewhere. So it has to be wrong. I don't know what is wrong with me. I can't even remember my algebra. <laughs> This is awful. Okay, so 2x, and then these guys are the constants times 1, y squared is 0, negative 14, 0, and 0. So 2x, 4y, minus 14. Yes, okay. Now 0, 4x times 1 plus 2y, 0, negative 10, 0. So 4x plus 2y minus 10. So I did negative 2. So negative 8x, negative 4y, positive 20. So this became negative 6x. Those went away. Negative 14 plus 20 is 6. When I move it over, it becomes negative 6. When I divide both sides by negative 6, I get 1. So when I plug in 1, I plugged it into the top one. So 2 times 1 plus 4y, which is just 2 plus 14y. Oh, I see what I did right there, right there. I put 14. It's supposed to be 4y. It's not 14y. And then minus this 14. So 4y, aha, there it is. See, it's why poor penmanship is a, is a thing, right? We don't want to have poor penmanship because then we're likely to have an error. So I didn't remember getting a fraction when I did this at home. So I kind of had an inkling. It was no good. Um, let's see. Yes, now we get it. So definitely don't be like me in rushing through the last two parts. You, they're super easy, but <laughs> they, you need to take it slow. Otherwise, you'll make silly errors like I did. Okay. But that is the end of this lesson. I apologize for the two errors at the end. But the good news is, is that I found them. And that's exactly what you need to do if you make an error is find out where you made that error so that you don't repeat it again. Um, I made a different error. Here I wrote down an X instead of the correct variable. Over here I had the correct variables, but I put a one in there out of nowhere. <laughs> so just go slow, make sure you do everything precisely.